we have Brother Blair, one of our young minister, one of our young preacher, one of our young anointed man of God, to declare God's word to you. Amen. Without fear and without trembling. I'm going to invite him up at this moment as he comes to declare God's word to you. Praise God. Blessed morning, brethren. Let us pray. Father God, you are holy. You are worthy, O oh God. You are faithful. There is no one like unto you. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are my all in all, Father God. Thank you that I can approach your throne of grace, yes. not because of any goodness in me, O oh God, yes. but because of your yes. grace and mercy, O oh God. Father God, thank you for Jesus Christ, O oh God, who came and lived a sinless life, O oh God, who died in my place, O oh God, so that I may have a relationship with you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you will help me today, O oh God, and you will not let me be confounded, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your promises that I stand before your people today because of your promises, O oh God. Your promise never to leave me nor forsake me, O oh God. Your promise that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, O oh God. I do not come in my own accord, O oh God, but I come in the power of your Holy Spirit, O oh God. I pray that you would anoint me afresh, O oh God. Move in my heart, O oh God. I pray that you would change hearts today, O oh God. I pray that you would challenge hearts today, O oh God. I pray that you would break every yoke that is present here, O oh God. I pray that you would lift up every heavy burden, O oh God. I pray that you would break down every stronghold from the enemy, O oh God. Have your perfect way in this place, O oh God. May the words that I declare today not be my own, O oh God, but let it be your unedited and unadulterated word, O oh God. A word from you, O oh God. A word for this season, O oh God. Father God, help this church, O oh God. Help this ministry, O oh God. Move in this place, O oh God. May my speech be with grace, O oh God. Season with salt, O oh God. May I speak the truth that is in your word and the truth only, O oh God. I pray that you would open my mouth when I speak, O oh God, so that I may declare, O oh God, your word Lord, oh God, Father God, have your way. Save a soul here today, oh God. I pray that you would rule supreme, oh God. Hallelujah, in this place. And we will give you all the glory. And I will give you all the praise, oh God. Because it all belongs to you, oh God. Do not pass me by today, oh God. But I pray that you would come and visit me, oh God. Visit your fellowship your body that is here today, O oh God. You may your Holy Spirit dwell in this place, O oh God. May, be, may the Spirit of the living God manifest, O oh God. Manifest your presence, O oh God. We need to hear from you, O oh God. We need to hear what you are saying to your people, O oh God, so that we may walk in the obedience of your word, O oh God. Father God, thank you, O oh God. I thank you for your grace, O oh God. I thank you for your mercy. Oh God, I thank you for your love and kindness, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, that you are patient with me, oh God, that you are forgiven, oh God, you are slow to anger, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you are also just, Father God. You are just, oh God, you have the God of justice, oh God. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you for your word today, oh God. Thank you for your anointing today, oh God. I pray that I would be a willing vessel. Oh God, for your anointing, oh God, I pray that you would use me as you will, oh God. Your will be done, not my own, oh God. May I decrease and you increase, oh God. I pray that we will see you, oh God, in this place, oh God. We will see how you are moving, oh God. I pray that you, that this word, oh God, will position our fellowship to be blessed by you, oh God, and also to be a blessing to others, oh God. 
God. I thank you, O oh God. I pray that you would bless every family, O oh God. Bless, ev bless all of our friends, O oh God, and neighbors that are here today, O oh God. May you be the Lord of our lives and our circumstances, O oh God. We commit everything into your hands. I commit myself, O oh God, into your hands, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am nothing without Christ. I am nothing if I'm not <clears throat> connected to Christ. If I, if I don't abide in Christ, I am nothing. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to acknowledge God who is the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to acknowledge my dear wife, Mrs. Blair, who is the love of my life, who prays for me, who is always by my side. I thank you for even the simple things that you do. You make, made breakfast for me this morning. You ironed my shirt, make sure that even my tie is ironed. And I bless God for you, bless God for the blessing that you are. I thank you that you have the gift for ironing, ironing clothes. Thank you for that gift. Thank you, Lord. And I thank God for our pastors. I thank God for the spiritual leaders of this house. Thank God for Bishop Trevor Rankin. And I call you Bishop. Thank God for Pastor Yvonne Rankin. God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you have started this ministry. Is it, let's see, 27 years ago, and I only came less than a year ago. So thank you for your faithfulness because I can come here because of your faithfulness. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. I also want to thank the members. I thank everyone of you for inviting me into this fellowship, as I mentioned. I've joined this fellowship less than a year ago, so thank you for welcoming me with open arms and hearts. And I, we welcome the visitors, I want to especially welcome the visitors, our family members, our friends, our neighbors, all who are here, we welcome you. Thank you that we have a full house in here today. And the church has been this year focusing on the power of God. And we've been, the key verse has been Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And in obedience to God, I want to follow along that same, you know, the power of God. So the message of my title today is the power of intercession the power of intercession. And what is intercession? So in my understanding, intercession is standing in the gap and intervening for others before God. It is to plead with God for others. Intercession is earnestly or humbly asking God to help others. When we lift up a cry for others, that is also intercession. We can simply pray, Lord have mercy. That is intercession. When people's situation are well beyond our wisdom or reach, we can just say, Lord, have mercy. So, so th today, the title is The Power of Intercession. And you can begin to turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 9. We will be in Daniel chapter 9, looking at the first 19 verses. And we see just to give you, tell you more about intercession while you look for the passage. We see intercession all through the Bible. You know, with Moses, we see that, we see an example of Moses' intercession when he came down from the mountain only to see the Israelites worshiping a golden calf that would lead them back to the land of Egypt. God wanted to kill them, but Moses interceded on their behalf, and God listened to his plea. 
and Israel was spared. Many times we see with the story of the Israelites, we see how Moses interceded on behalf of the people, on behalf of the Israelites, and God spared them, God pardoned them from destruction. And we also see in Job, with Job, we know how Job interceded for his children and how he prayed continually for his children. And in Job 1, 4, and 5, it says, And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink and with them, to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Yeah. Thus did Job continually. We thank God for praying parents. I even thank God for my parents who every morning they pray for their children. They pray for their children in law. They pray for their grandchildren. And, you know, my wife, Stacy was the last person they added to that list. Um, and they pray by name, starting with my eldest sister, start going down to my older brother, myself, my brother-in-law. You know, they pray for my older nephew, my younger nephew, and, you know, finally my wife, you know, who is the most recent addition. So, I, you know, I, it is a blessing when our parents are praying for us, that when we have praying parents who are covering us under the blood of Jesus. So thank God for praying parents, and let us be grateful for them. And I know even now my mom is praying for me, I know. Yes, so I just thank God for the intercessors. Praise God. Praise God. So we are in... Daniel chapter 9, and we will read together Daniel chapter 9. And this is Daniel's humble, reverent, and passionate prayer for the Jews, for his people. And let's begin in verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahazazurus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy with them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned, and we have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to a to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near, and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of faith, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee, to the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, 
which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he had confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven had not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem, as it is written in the law of Moses. All this evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore had the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. And know, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned as at this day. We have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate. For the Lord's sake, O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. We praise God for his word. We praise God. Praise God that we can study his word and to give you a background of Daniel. So Daniel was a teenager when he and the covenant people were taken from Jerusalem into captivity in Babylon. In more than 60 years of his life in Babylon, Daniel faced many challenges, but in all those days, all those years, he grew stronger in his commitment to God. Daniel was a prophet, but he also served as an advisor in the courts of foreign kings. Daniel was known for his righteousness, wisdom, and prayer life, and God blessed Daniel even in the midst of captivity and now we get to this point and we will we will be focusing on this passage that we read and going through it so we're going to start you know at the very beginning where you know there was a change there was a new kingdom a new king but Daniel remains the same we see how Daniel served many kings even though he you know he was in captivity you know he was God raised him up raised him up even in the enemy's camp God raised him up because he was committed to God and so in verse 2 it says in the first year of his reign I Daniel understood by the books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70, 70 years in desolations of Jerusalem and so Daniel is reading God's word. He's reading from the book of Jeremiah because they are in captivity and they've been in captivity for many decades. They've been in captivity. But when Daniel read the scroll of Jeremiah, so Jeremiah was a prophet in his childhood and Jeremiah wrote about you know, their captivity lasting 70 years. And when Daniel read he realized that that 70 years was almost up. So Daniel 
prayed. He began to pray to God and, and praise God for Daniel, praise God for people that will read the word of God and know the promises because the Bible is filled with many promises and we cannot claim the promises unless we read, unless we read the word of God. So we thank God for Daniel who read the scroll of, of Jeremiah to find out and to know how long their captivity would be. And if we want to pray according to God's will, we have to know his word. We have to know his word. We have to know what his word said. So in verse 3, we see after Daniel, you know, read God's word. And we, we, we know that, you know, one of the pillars of intercession is reading and praying God's word. And, you know, as pastor would say, when we read God's word, God speaks to us. But when we pray, we, we speak to God. And also want to, you know, highlight what Daniel did as a response. His response was to pray. His response was to intercede for the people. He did not go out and say, let's go, let's get an army to, de to defeat our, the people that are holding us captive. But Daniel prayed. Dan Daniel did not only pray, but he fasted. We see in verse 3 where he said, And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. If you've been in captivity for so long, you know, we need more than prayer. We need fasting as well, and that is what Daniel did. Daniel turns to the Lord, and he pleads in prayer and fasting in sackcloth and ashes, and then in confession. And prayer is how we fight. The prayer is how we fight this battle. In Ephesians 6, 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. We are fighting against spiritual forces we cannot see. So the only way we can fight is on our knees before our great and mighty God. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, praise God. So we move to verse 4, where Daniel begins to confess. You know, Daniel first confesses God's faithfulness. He confesses that through it all, God has been faithful. God has been faithful. So he said, and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant. God keeps covenant. God is faithful. Keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him. And then Daniel explains what it means to love God. He continues to say, to them that keep his commandments. And Jesus said, what did Jesus say in John 14, 15? He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So if we want to know if we love God, we have to see if we're keeping his commandments, his, if we're obeying his laws. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And then we go to verse 5, where Daniel says, We have sinned. We have sinned. And note know the pronoun, we. Four times in the chapter, Daniel acknowledges the people's sins, but always includes himself in their number. As with all great leaders, he identifies himself with his people. And when we intercede, when we intercede for people, we cannot separate ourselves from them. We cannot say, you have sinned. And we cannot tell someone else that they need to repent. So he didn't point fingers, but four times in this chapter, Daniel said, we have sinned. Daniel confesses the people's faithlessness. God is faithful, but... Daniel is now confessing the people's faithlessness and sin. Daniel identifies with Israel as one people. So therefore he says, we 
have sinned. We are all accountable. We are all each other's keeper. We have all sinned. So he continues from verse 14 all the way to verse 15. You know, these verses are in essence a prayer of confession of the nation's sin. Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Yes, sometimes we need to come to God. We need to humble ourselves, oh God, before our great and mighty God and ask for his forgiveness, acknowledging our wrongdoings and our shortcomings, our transgressions, our iniquities, oh God. We have to sometimes even ask God to point out the things that are wrong in our lives because we might be living our lives thinking that we are good, we are perfect, but we are not. We are not. All have sinned. All have sinned. We have sinned. It may not be obvious sins. It might just be subtle sins. The sin of pride or sin that sin of sin in our thoughts. We sin in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. The sin of commission or omission in the good that we have not done or the evil we have done. We sin always. We sin every day. We are not perfect. We are not perfect. And so when we get to the later verses, verses 16 to 19, Daniel offers a petition for God to fulfill his word. His word that was that the people will be in captivity for 70 years. But we know if we are not living by God's word, if we are not obeying his commandments, this was just a promise but his promise are for those who love God. His promise are for those who obey his commandments. So in order for this to be made true, they had to repent, they had to acknowledge their sin, they had to repent, and they had to, most importantly, turn from their evil ways in order to fulfill this promise. So that is why Daniel had to pray, he had to fast on behalf of the people. Praise God. So Daniel prayed. Daniel offers a petition for God to fulfill his word. He prayed for God's wrath against his people to be turned away, as in verse 16, and for God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness to be displayed in the people's restoration to their land. So they were in captivity. They were there homeland Jerusalem was destroyed the temple was in ruins and so Daniel was praying that they would be restored to their native land that they would rebuild their temple and God is, and Daniel is praying that God will fulfill his promise at the end of 70 years and it's amazing that God did fulfill his promise that Daniel who was taken captive as a teenager he saw God fulfill this promise in his old age, he saw how God worked in his life and in the life of the people, his people. Praise God, praise God. And we know, and you know, Daniel, you know, he prayed for the Jews, but when we look in the New Testament, so in the Old Testament, we saw intercessors like Daniel, like Moses, like Job. But in the New Testament, you know, God is faithful in the New Testament. God is faithful in the Old Testament by sending Daniel and other intercessors. God is faithful in the New Testament by sending Jesus Christ. And Jesus is worthy of greater honor even before Jesus left earth, even before he was lifted up to the cross. He prayed in John 17 for all believers, Jews and Gentiles alike. So this was just a story that is unfolding how God worked in the lives of the Israelites and then Jesus would come through that very line to be our savior, to restore us, all people, whoever will, would come to him. And I would describe and 
like show the difference between Daniel and Jesus. Like Daniel was from the tribe of Judah, but Jesus is the Lion of Judah. Daniel interceded for the Jews. Jesus intercedes even right now for the church, both Jews and Gentiles. Daniel was not without sin, but Jesus was sinless. Daniel was a great prophet, but Jesus is the fulfillment of prophecy. Daniel was the servant of God, but Jesus is the Son of God. Daniel knew God, but Jesus is God. We see how Jesus prayed, O oh God, in John 17 for all of us, for all those who would believe. Praise God. In Isaiah 53, 12, it said, Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, praise God, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. And in Hebrews 7, 24 to 25, we're going to explain further the intercession of Jesus Christ. And it says, Hebrews 7, beginning from verse 24, But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to intercede for them. Praise God. Jesus' present ministry is interceding before God on behalf of all believers, on behalf of all those who believe. Jesus is at God's right hand, always and actively interceding for us. Praise God. Because Christ is standing in the gap, when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sinful self, but he sees us through the lens of Christ's righteousness. Praise God. Christ is the only one righteous, holy, and sinless. Praise God. But we also have a help in the spirit. When Jesus left, he gave us a help. In Romans 8, 26, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Praise God. We have heard the word of the Lord. And I pray earlier that our hearts will be changed and challenged. So first, I want to, I want to challenge us, but I want to challenge the men first. Men, as the husband or man in our household, God has called us to be the priests in our home and spiritual covering for our family. It is our responsibility to lead and intercede on behalf of our family. I pray that we would recognize and utilize even our wives as a help and compliment that God has graciously given us. Praise God. And for the church, God is calling our church members to be true intercessors who hear from God, who know how to pray and what to pray for. May we confess and humble ourselves when we recognize our sins, transgressions, wrongdoings, and shortcomings. Let us intercede for a revival in our church and become intercessors for our unsaved family members, friends, and neighbors. Praise God. Praise God. And I believe God is also calling our church members to really pray and support our pastors. Praise God. They need aggressive intercession and intentional affirmation to be the leaders, the spiritual leaders, to be the shepherds of our church. I pray that we would each consider picking a day every week to cover the spiritual leaders, our spiritual leaders in intercessory prayer. I believe that we can choose a day every week. Each person choose one day. And we will then know that our pastors, our bishop and our pastors are covered every day because they are our leaders. And so we need to cover them. We need to have God's covering on them every day. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. First Timothy 2, 1 to 4. It says, I urge then, 
first of all, that petitions and prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. We have a lot to pray for, and we need to pray. We need to intercede. We need to intercede for others. Even Christians need intercession. As I stand before you today, I had to ask for intercession. I, had, I know my wife is and always is praying and interceding for me. She is always by my side. Praise God for her. I know that people who I grew up with are interceding for me. Um, when I think of this Bible, like I got this Bible 22 years ago when I graduated from high school. It's a King James study Bible I got from a teacher. And you know, this week, you know, while I was struggling with this word, encountering a, several roadblocks, I just sent her a WhatsApp message saying that I'll be given a message on Sunday to pray for me. And she prayed for me. She actually sent me a voice note, a voice prayer that I was able to listen to. And even this morning, I was listen, I listened to it and found encouragement in it. And it's amazing when we have people that are praying for us, especially persons that know us since childhood, because they know how to pray, they know what to pray for, especially concerning us. And they know, they know exactly what to pray for. And I've seen over the years, this particular teacher, when she would pray, God would answer. So I knew at this moment that I can ask her to pray for me. And I praise God for her. And, you know, we, we always need to hear from God to know how he would have us to pray. Someone may ask us to pray for healing, but in our spirit we feel as though we need to pray for salvation first before we could even pray for healing. We may need to pray for salvation before we pray for deliverance. We may need to pray for salvation before we need we pray for restoration. Salvation is indeed the first step. And of given you some of these challenges as men. I've given you challenges as church members. But before we can become an intercessor, we need to become a follower of Jesus Christ. You know, pastor said the only prayer that God hears from an unbeliever is the prayer of repentance. And the powerful message of the gospel is that all men are sinners and sin has a penalty. There's a punishment for our sin. And the good news is that Christ paid that penalty and you receive Christ's payment for your sin by faith. It is not your acknowledgement of the truth that saves you, but your response to it. Because even the demons believe. Even the demons believe. So I say again, it is, not, it is not your acknowledgement of the truth that saves you, but your response to it. And I will use a simple example of when someone is proposing to you. So a year ago, May 21, I proposed to my wife. I proposed to the person who is now my wife. <laughs> And if I may ask my wife to kindly come, come up and join me by my side. So a year ago, May, so it's exactly a year ago, May 2021, a year ago that I proposed to my lovely wife. And I bought her the ring. It cost me something, but it cost her nothing. <laughs> All she had to do was say yes. She did more than say yes. She, she sang as well. She sang yes. So all you have to do is believe. You can take your seat. All you have to do is believe. But at the same time, when she said yes to me, what was she saying to everybody else? No. no. The gift of God is free. Eternal life is free. It is a free gift. 
But when you take that gift, you are also turning away from your sin. Just like when we got married, we were turning away from everybody else. May God strengthen you to say, yes, Lord, and yield to his will and way. For those of us who are already followers of Jesus Christ, may God's spirit keep us on the straight and narrow path. Praise God. Praise God. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word, for your people. We thank you for your word that went forth, oh God. Father God, I pray you, you will change hearts, that you will challenge hearts, oh God, to take on your responsibility, oh God, to follow you, to follow Jesus Christ. When we follow Jesus Christ, he will lead us to you. He will lead us into your presence. In your presence is where we want to be, oh God. Help us, oh God, to be a praying church, oh God, who will lift up our pastors, oh God, who will lift up our family, oh God, who will lift up the government, oh God, who will lift up our unsafe family members and friends before you, oh God. Hallelujah, Father God. You are calling us to be true intercessors, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Help us to pray without ceasing, O oh God. Help us to continue instant in prayer, O oh God. Because we need you all the time, O oh God. Even when things seem to be going good, Father God. We need you, God. We need you all the time, O oh God. Thank you that you are our help. You are our strength, O oh God. Thank you that you are our all in all, O oh God. Father God, I pray that you will bless us, that you will pour out your grace upon us, O oh God, so that we may abound in every good work, Father God, so that we will do the work that you have called us to do, O oh God. We bless you and we praise you and we give you all the thanks and all the glory, O oh God. May you be glorified, O oh God, forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.